believe that I'm driving the Volkswagen XL1. We only made a couple hundred of these. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> this thing is just insane. And you can absolutely hear that diesel engine when it comes on. <laughs> this is insane. I can't believe I'm driving this thing. <laughs> I, I, I think you can tell that this is... Oh, the steering is so weird. It really is. Really strange, but... I can't, I, I can't figure out how to describe it. It's, it's very direct, but it's also... Maybe because the tires are so odd. I mean, you can feel everything in the steering. Everything. Wow. <laughs> Alright, let me... Let me park this up. Oh, yeah, and it's like it's got like a it like kicks back almost like you're in a four-wheel drive vehicle and the, the you know the front end is oh the engine came back on because I put it in park. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Well hey y'all, welcome back to Doug's Cars. Volkswagen XL1. Another Doug made a video of this a while back, but uh, it's my turn now. 261 miles per gallon claimed by Volkswagen. It's a diesel electric hybrid that was never imported to the US and they only sold 200 to the general public back in about 2014. This car is a riot. You have never seen anything like it before? Well, unless you watched uh, Hubnut's video or Doug DeMuro's video or followed Jim McGrail on Twitter when he drove this around Europe. But this thing is just insane. Gull wing doors, but the dashboard out of like a golf. And everything is carbon fiber reinforced plastic. You've got these aero wheel covers. And, I mean, just look at this. No rear view mirrors, you've got cameras with little screens on the side of the doors. Way down low though, like not up here where you'd expect them to be. And to open the door, you just press that, lift. Door comes up, door goes down. You've got DeLorean style windows. Nope, they're not power, they have a hand crank. And as you can probably tell, a weird feature, Yes, the, the seats are not even next to each other because this is such a small, tiny car. They didn't have the ability to put them next to each other in, in the, the space that they had. So the passenger always sits all the way back. That seat's not adjustable. The driver's seat, thankfully, is. Um, but <laughs> I, I'm just blown away that I'm here and I'm driving this car here in Nashville, Tennessee at the Lane Motor Museum. If you have never been here before, put it on your list. I was here a couple of years ago and I came back to film this car because it is that cool and I am that amazed and humbled that I'm here able to do that and I have a lot of people to thank for that. First of all is Jim, uh, Jeff, of course, and Robert who's been helping me out. I'll probably thank them many more times in this video because my mind is blown. Last week I was driving a $500 Volvo and today I'm driving like a $150,000 Volkswagen. Yes, that's right and it's not a Phaeton. One wiper, but then again the windshield's like three feet wide at most. <laughs> no engine up here. There's a diesel engine out of like a Polo that's in the back. It's under uh, one liter. It's a little tiny, very, very rattly noisy engine. But then again, there's not a lot of sound deadening material in this car to save weight to get it to that 260 MPG figure, which I don't think is really possible, but it definitely is excellent on fuel. So, and as I mentioned, it's a diesel hybrid. So it's just, that's kind of unusual in, in our world, right? Most hybrids are gas motors and, you know, diesel's fallen out of favor. I, I don't know, I don't think this has anything to do with diesel. Fall oh, wait, yes, that exactly has something to do with diesel falling out of favor. But this is a technological tool of force. This is the same company that brought you, like, the Bugatti Veyron and the VW Phaeton that was supposed to be driven at top speed all day long in 110 degree heat with the air conditioning set at 70 degrees. All those things that Ferdinand Piëch wanted this does none of them, but it gets great miles per gallon. And they only sold them in Europe, 200 of them. This has to be the only one in the US. And I've got some great stories from the guy who actually got this car in Germany, drove it around Europe, good reason for that. He had to ship it out of the UK where he's from to come over here to Tennessee for the owner of the museum. Problem is, when he was gonna take this car back to the UK, it didn't have enough miles or kilometers on it and they wanted to tax it as a new car, even though it was already like five years old. So he ended up having to drive it around Europe 
which is not as fun as it sounds. This is a very temperamental car, like to Poland and places like that. And um, just to put some more miles on it, to put some more kilometers on it, it doesn't sound right. Uh, and he's from Northern Ireland, so he understands what miles are. It, it, for tax reasons, obviously, he had to drive this around Europe. And like I said, this is not a fun car to drive around anywhere on that scale. It's a blast to drive around here, but you have no rear visibility, the side view mirrors of those cameras, and you know it, it just doesn't have any power. It, it's not meant to have any power. For, for one thing, you know, it's an environmentally friendly car, but you just you don't want to be in, in this next to an 18-wheeler hauling Latvian milk or whatever it is that Clarkson used to always say. Um, very temperamental, but really, really cool. As Jim would say, the car of the future. I put the hazard lights on so you can see they're cool. I mean, this is a 2014. Car makers weren't doing crazy lights really yet. Uh, this is kind of the beginning of that. But this is a really cool pearl white paint. Underneath here is the diesel engine. Um, and as you can see, there's no rear window. There's zero rear visibility on this car. When Robert let me drive it out of the museum into the parking garage that's attached, I had all my camera gear in the car that I drove here. And he said, you know, you just pull up behind, that way you don't have to, he's like, you can back up. But, you know, I was like, I will just park behind where I am and put my gear in here to come out where I'm filming because I don't want to have to back this up if I don't need to. <laughs> if I damage this car, where are you going to get another one? Anyway, um, you can see it's got a, a manufacturer transporter tag on this. All the cars here are driven regularly, which is a great thing. This, this museum, by the way, I have made a video here before two years ago. You have to put it on your list if you like cool, interesting, weird, quirky cars. There's a reason Doug DeMuro came here a few months back. That museum right there is absolutely chock full of an amazing collection of cars you will never see anywhere else. Peel P50, uh, Reliant Robin, the three-wheel car that Clarkson tipped over. This, they've got Tatras and Renaults and all these things that we didn't get in the US. You're not gonna find a 57 Chevy with chrome shining up in there. They're just not, not that kind of museum. Um, but my friend who got this car here also brought a lot of vehicles over. They have a Renault Avantime, a bunch of Fiat Pandas that he brought over. Pretty much anything right-hand drive in there, he brought. This, of course, is not right-hand drive. This was bought in Germany, where most of them were sold. And they're really not supposed to be operated outside of Germany. Um, the joke is that someone from Wolfsburg is listening in when you drive the car. Uh, es tut mir leid, ich fahre dein Auto jetzt. Um, it's not supposed to be driven here, and it's supposed to only be serviced at a Volkswagen facility in Germany, like every few thousand miles. Obviously, that's not going to happen. This has been here for a while. I saw this here a couple years ago. Uh, back to the transporter plate. As you may know, in the US, you can import cars after 25 years. That, that To be said, 25 model years ago, you can import pretty much anything you want. This is a 2014. How did it get here? Well, on a show and display tag. And because it's the it's a one of one, basically, that's possible to do. That's why it's here, and that's why it's tagged this way. So they can actually drive it. And it, Robert, the curator, was telling me, they'll drive this out on the interstate, and people will just like almost cause wrecks trying to take pictures of this crazy, crazy cool car. There's the exterior badging. That's the only place you're going to see XL1 on this, and fuel filler door for the diesel. This is a plug-in hybrid in Europe. But again, like I, you, you just can't plug this in here. Um, it's just not possible. The, the electricity is in such a a different format, different hertz, different volts and all that, that it just, it doesn't work with the charger that they have. And they did have a transformer to set the charger up so it would work properly and it blew out. Um, and I've done that in Europe myself. I had a printer once that was a laser printer, plugged it into a transformer and pop as soon as I hit print. Um, it's only like 10, 15 in the morning and it's already about 90 degrees out here in Nashville. So I apologize for my sweatiness, but you're just gonna have to get used to it because I am not leaving until this car is properly reviewed by Doug's cars. So getting in, you have to get over this really wide sill and there's a bunch of foot scrapes here. Um, so people have obviously kind of already scratched up with their shoes. I like to think that some of these are from Doug DeMuro. Like, Cause he's six foot three, six foot four like me. Um, interior is, is kind of cool. It's um, it's carbon fiber. You've got regular VW switches, regular VW gauges. I'll show these more when I get the camera inside. And a really tiny steering wheel, regular turn signal stock, basic air conditioning controls. And this seat, by the way, is absolutely, or it was, there we go, absolutely adjustable. 
just like that. So unlike the passenger side where you're stuck, but thankfully it's all the way back. So even the tallest of tall people can sit comfortably over there. That's a thinly padded seat, but it actually is fairly comfortable to sit in. Let's take a look at the interior. Okay, as promised, here's a very sweaty interior. <laughs> so again, this switch gear is straight out of the Volkswagen parts bin, as is that chime. Uh, I mean, this looks just like I had in, on my Golf. Got, you know, your wiper control for the one wiper there. Start, stop button. Um, let's see. Ignition switched on. I'm trying to get the wiper to come on, but apparently it won't. Maybe it won't when the doors are up. Let me close this door so you can see the rear view mirror, the camera's on the outside. And of course that one is showing <laughs> one of the street lights here in the parking lot because it's it's aimed up. You've got this little Garmin screen here that shows when the doors is open and you can see the regular air conditioning controls in Celsius, of course, because that's how that goes. Um, I see remember Dr. Muir not knowing what this button does, but uh, I think it turns on the rear view cameras. Um, I'm not sure. Electronic parking brake, hazard lights. You've got a little tiny storage compartment here, which would probably fit an early iPhone, but not a current one. Um, you know, regular steering wheel. Let's see what the horn sounds like. <laughs> yep, that's what I expected. Um, you know, got a little overhead console here with some reading lights. And it looks like maybe microphones for a Bluetooth system. And then of course, these are the window cranks. <laughs> if I can get it to work. Yeah, there it goes. It's awkward to use because it folds and it's stiff, but yeah, there it goes. And you know, you've got some nice cloth door panels here to rest your arm on at an angle. Here is the door pull. And it's not one of the electronic ones where this is the backup. That is the door pull. There's no electronic pull on this car. <laughs> this thing is just awesome. I know it is not the best driving car in the world. It's not meant to be, but I wouldn't turn down even this short little drive around here for anything. This has been an absolute blast. And I'm just gonna keep throwing it out there. Put this museum on your list of places to go. Everybody's coming to Nashville because it's such a hot city right now. Not just because I'm sweating, but I mean, you know, they've got breweries, they got music, they've got Opry, they've got the, the Ryman, all that fun stuff. But you have got to come out to Murfreesboro Pike here out near the airport and tour the Lane Museum. It's 12 bucks. They have insane cars there. You have to come see this XL1 because you've seen it on YouTube a bunch of times now. I'm just so glad I have gotten to drive this thing and let's drive it around a little bit more. Safety third, even though I'm right here, I'm gonna put this on. I noticed this little sticker that says maximum weight is 385 pounds or 175 kilos, uh, which is interesting. Hopefully you don't have any, uh, any people in the car who um, went to Shoney's all-you-can-eat buffet, because that, that would probably not be good. All right, service now, put this in drive. Shifter is normal. You shift back to be in, he said to put it in D1, or S1, I'm sorry. I realize their air conditioning units are going, but the initial noise this makes when you start off with the electric power, oh, it's, it's like jerky, it's weird. It's just so, it's just uncanny. And, and the steering is so odd as well. Like I really, I don't remember that being discussed as much in the other reviews is how, now maybe something's happened to the steering since it was reviewed, but I don't think so. I mean, it's in a museum, it's a museum piece. And there goes the rattly diesel. I mean, the, the parking lot here is just a little bit bumpy, like frost heaves and it is definitely noticeable in the suspension. This thing rides really, really, really hard. And I, I'm, I'm only going 20 kilometers an hour and then there's people in the parking lot that are staring at me because obviously they would be. <sighs> I, I, I don't know how long you'd have to drive this for the diesel engine. Wow, that steering is just so not linear. It really isn't. And these tires are tiny. They're, they're like the tires on my i3. They're very narrow, very low rolling resistance tires. And that Riley diesel, it, it sounds like it's a truck engine. Actually, it, it's not big enough to be a truck engine, obviously, but it's just, it reminds me of a 1970s Mercedes with its rattle. And part of it's probably because I have the windows down, but uh, I'm not even gonna try to turn the air conditioning on in this thing. 
um, the battery level is so low that it's not even not even gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> Y'all, this is awesome. So Jim, who actually got this car for the Lane Museum over in Europe and drove it around, sent me a bunch of information about this car that you're not gonna hear in Doug DeMuro's video because he didn't have access to Jim, but just a lot of like crazy things that Volkswagen said, like it can only be driven in Germany and the UK. You cannot take it near water, but he's not really sure what that means. Um, I assume don't drive it through puddles. Uh, you cannot park with two wheels on the road and two wheels on the sidewalk, which is very common in Europe, of course, but it's probably because it's so low to the ground. Um, you cannot take it on a ferry, but I guess that, that would be near water. So um, you also can't air freight the car, but obviously it came over here, I'm imagining on a boat in a container of some kind. You can't go above 5,000 feet, um, which is good it's not in Denver then, right? Um, <laughs> also, I mentioned it's, it's a plug-in hybrid. The battery has been at like 7.5% charge, and that's why the diesel engine kept coming on as I was driving. But um, it will only charge itself up to 25% with the engine. It will not go to 100%. You have to use the cable for that. But as I explained earlier, you can't charge it with the cable in this country at all. So, <laughs> I mean, uh, there's just so many. This was, what, uh, about 100,000 euros when it was new. And, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, he said that uh, this, white, this white paint was widely chosen because it was free. Other paint colors were like 20,000 euros, which is just like crazy, like Tesla money for paint colors. But um, you, you cannot get any of the parts for this car over counter at a Volkswagen dealership. They've like blocked out all of the part numbers. So you can't just go get an oil filter for this diesel motor. Um, it, basically it can only be repaired by, by like a Q from 007 in Germany. Um, the Carbon ceramic brakes, yes, they're carbon ceramic. Of course, like 30 grand to replace, as they usually are. The, the headlights are 4,000 um, pounds each because they're LED, LED projectors and they only made a few of them. Um, you know, just, <laughs> just crazy stuff that happened here with this car when they made it. And I am, I, I've said it before y'all, I'm saying it again, I am still blown away that I got to, to drive this car around and enjoy it. And uh, I'm so glad I have been able to do this and bring this for y'all to see because it is a highlight of my year, y'all. This has been absolutely awesome. And I get to drive it back in again, which is gonna be great because there's probably more people showing up here at the museum now that they're, you know, been open for an hour or so. It is a Friday, so it won't be as busy as a weekend, but I get to drive it past them, hear that diesel clatter up, fire up, and see the look on their eyes when I drive past and the open jaws. Because even at a museum like this, this thing is incredibly rare and unusual. And I, I'm just so glad that I have had the opportunity to spend some time with this car. It made watching those videos all the more amazing because it really is this unusual and it is full of quirks and features. Now I got a copyright claim from Doug. <laughs> but I'm driving this in and I'm bringing y'all along for the ride one more time because why not? You get to see the gullwing door closed again. Let me fire this up. <laughs> oh, check tires. Spelled Tyrus, like the, the British way with a Y. Um, I'm pretty sure I read somewhere where that was actually truly incorrect, um, that it should actually be spelled with an I. Um, of course, that's not gonna stop them from spelling it that way. Now, I wanna put this in S1, I believe, is what we drove it out of there in. Battery charge level 7.5, yeah, so the diesel might come on. There's D1, S1, perfect, okay. It actually accelerates on its own, which is different to my i3 and most electric cars. I guess if there are some that have creep mode, but I'm not touching the gas, and I'm now actually going 10 kilometers an hour uh, by itself. So I think that's actually faster than a normal like gas car put in drive. It's so weird. <laughs> it switched to S2, so it shifted into second gear at like 15 kilometers an hour. 30.5 Celsius, Celsius out, according to this. So for y'all who know what that is, I know that's hot, but um, it was like 90 when I when I got here. And uh, wow, there's like 30 people getting on some type of bus here. I'm gonna drive around them and uh, safely. They're over on the sidewalk. Don't worry, I'm not a terrible person and drive this into the garage in the shade. The great thing about this museum is they actually have a parking garage where there are exhibits that you can see. Like I got here before they opened, even though I was meeting the curator. And um, 
I just hung out in there for a few minutes and looked around because I was about 15 minutes early. Came in from Eastern Tennessee this morning. Side note, just because it's fun, I think today is the only time I have ever, or will ever, go from one time zone to another time zone and then back to the original time zone in the same day. I you know every other time I've changed time zones, I've been flying somewhere or traveling really, and you stay in that time zone for a period of time. Um, not so this time. Put this maybe here by the ramp. It's already got my name on it. Huh. Wanted to do a quick walk around of the car with the handheld camera so you can get an idea of what it looks like and you can see how how truly narrow these tires are. Like, they're actually smaller and narrower than the ones on the i3. And they're obviously aerodynamically covered up, just like the door handles. And you can see the, the cameras for the side view mirrors there with the built-in turn signal repeaters. Cutouts in the roof. When the door open, your, your Kim's all there. You've got your venting for the diesel engine. And it's a really teardrop-shaped car. It's a really kind of, I think it's a fairly pretty design. And I normally don't like covered rear wheels. I just never really have. But for what this car is, they have to be. Oh yeah. So it is interesting when you back up, it puts the, the cameras in kind of a wide angle mode and then they say R on them in blue, baby blue print. So now that I've driven it around the lot, you can hear the clattery Mercedes diesel here in the, in the warehouse parking garage. I'm going to take it out on the street because we're better to experience a Volkswagen XL1 than on Murfreesboro Pike in the greater Nashville area, Davidson County. <laughs> I cannot believe that they've given me permission to do this, but I am so glad. Wow, the brakes have some travel on. There's no one coming. Perfect. Oh, it switched the diesel off. Now I'm on electric. It definitely is not a fast accelerating electric car, certainly compared to my i3. Um, and you feel everything. I think Demiro mentioned that in his video. Uh, it is very bumpy. It is very weird. There's no rear view mirror here. And the, the side mirrors are down there. So you kind of have to, especially a tall person like me, I mean, I'm close to the roof up here. You have to kind of look down and make sure. Um, let's see, I'm supposed to turn after a new police department. And he said the right turn lane is really, really, really beat up. And to try to avoid that when I make my right turn. Uh, wow, I've got downtown Nashville up in front of me. That's a police station. Okay. Uh, oh, that's the police headquarters. Wow. And they're definitely doing some construction here. Um, I'm just really glad there's no one around me at the moment. It's like Polk Avenue. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That right lane is absolutely destroyed. Yuck. That's, that's not a road. Where is the road? No, that's a Polk Avenue, but it went into a parking lot. Okay, he must mean this road up here. Fessler's Lane, okay. If anyone knows where that is in Nashville, then you know where I am. I'm next to a Burger King and a Volkswagen XL1. Okay, we've got a green arrow, good. I wanna make sure I obey every traffic law on this car because everyone's gonna know. So the, the steering is non-power. It's, it's, you know, fairly heavy when you're at no speed, but otherwise it's pretty good and, um, it doesn't have that issue I felt in the parking lot. Maybe it was just the surface of the road in the parking lot's a little bit rough. It's an older asphalt parking lot. And that could just be the reason. But on um, pretty smooth, newer asphalt, it doesn't feel bad. It feels actually similar to my i3, which is power assisted, but has those really skinny tires. So um, by the way, there's, you cannot see the front of this car at all. You can see where the wiper is and then nothing else. I have no idea how long it is. I know it's not very long. And of course, I can see the side view mirrors what's behind me. Um, it looks to be a giant F-150, but I can't see it here. Uh, it's like driving a you know a U-Haul or a van with no rear window, except it's a little tiny car. Um, not follow me, that's good. Uh, diesel back on, Let's see if I can pass this guy. Moves, got around the Dodge. Um, someone just yelled, look at that. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. Exactly. <laughs> um, this is, it's got, it's got a bit of a weird buffeting. I hope it's not affecting the, um, we'll crank this window up a little bit maybe. It'll help if I can. 
No, that made it worse. Ah, okay. I can't put that window up from over here while I'm driving because, of course, it's way over there and it's a crank. I'm driving an XL1 on the road. How cool is this? <laughs> this is awesome. I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe they let me do this. I'm going 60 kilometers an hour, which is about 40 miles per hour, I believe. The buffeting in the windows is annoying on the ears, but I don't really feel it. Um, you don't get a whole lot of a breeze in here either, unfortunately. Although, it would be nice to have that because it is very warm out. Now it's 33 Celsius, it says, and the diesel is very, very clattery behind me. There are some uh, railroad tracks coming up, and since this thing rides so harsh, I don't want to go over them too much. Uh, I believe this is the turn, hopefully. I hope this is where I'm going the right place. Uh, oh, railroad crossing yield. I guess I'm going to actually stop, even though it doesn't look like they've been used. <laughs> well, took it over some railroad ties. That's interesting. Um, oh good, there's someone behind me. I can barely see. Just a little tiny view of them. <laughs> this thing is so weird and so cool. And I know, I know that everyone on the street is watching me as I drive past. That looks like it over there. Okay, good. I came the, I came the correct way uh, out by the Speedway gas station, uh, like you said. A uh, giant truck going by! Have I thanked them enough? I'm gonna do it again. Thank you, Lane Museum, for just being generally awesome. And uh, this thing. I'm the only person in the United States driving a Volkswagen XL1 right now. The only person, no one else in the United States is driving one of these, just little old me. <laughs> That's just insane. Uh, all right, here we go, right on red. back at the museum. So a little, you know, five minute drive, but hey, absolutely worth every second of it. And I am so thankful and grateful that I got to experience this amazing ride. So there the steering got a little, little heavy. Um, I guess I'm, I'm going, I'm going on 20 kilometers an hour now. So that's why. And then back here in the garage and I'm going to turn the keys back over and uh, I'm going to go tour the museum because they change stuff all the time. And the last time I was here was the centenary of Citroen in uh, 2019 and now they've got Radwood going on so obviously as a child of the 80s I've got to go see Radwood what a great car what a what a great car y'all I have done some absolutely amazing things here on Doug's cars at least in my humble opinion nothing ever will compare to this someday I might get to drive a Lamborghini or do something fun like the big shots do but I got to drive this car driven by some of the automotive internet's most famous people. Jim drove this around Europe. Hubnut, whom I absolutely love his videos. Uh, he got to drive this around uh, a few years back when Jim had it in the UK. Doug DeMuro, of course, obviously royalty, just like the other two. Uh, but I just cannot thank Lane Motor Museum, Robert, Jim, and Jeff enough for giving me this opportunity to drive this absolutely awesome car. It's quirky, it's weird. It's not very user-friendly and it's not really that great of a car but you know the sum of the parts is better than what they are like this is this is phenomenal even though it's so weird I, I just I mean I'm gonna have to go home and go back to driving $500 Volvos and old Land Rovers and stuff and it's just not gonna feel the same but all that to say I am gonna continue bringing awesome content to y'all and I hope this will convince you to hit subscribe help me grow my channel I'd love to uh, Maybe get a lot more subscribers and, and get some more ad money so I can do a lot more cool stuff. That would help me a bunch. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe. If not, you can let me know down below and maybe I'll uh, take some of those uh, into consideration. But uh, thanks y'all so much for watching. Please come back and see some more Doug's cars soon. I'll be back with new stuff right away.